Hi, I'm Landon Cox and I'm with the Sawdust website. I've been learning Eagle over the last uh, few months with the help of uh, some of these Spark Fun classes that have been held up in Boulder. Uh, along the way, uh, Eagle, I've found, has some uh, very uh, kind of annoying quirks uh, from a user interface point of view. Uh, it's definitely not something that's uh, obvious right off the bat. And uh, so as a new user, I wanted to kind of show where I stumbled um, and also show you uh, easily how to get over some of these uh, things that you run into right off the bat. So this particular uh, tutorial is on how to uh, separate a label from a part so that you can uh, finally adjust its position or even rotate it. So I'm going to start with an example which is an inductor out of the um, parts, parts library of SparkFun. And I'm just going to click on that and put it in there. Now one of the first things is after you've inserted a part like that, you notice that there's another one stuck to your cursor. If you want to get it kind of unstuck, you can just go up in here and hit stop. So I've done that. Now my cursor is free. Uh, I've got a nice inductor here, a simple label. Uh, let's say I rotate this part because in the schematic it needs to be uh, oriented this way. I can easily rotate it that way, which is... Um, all intuitive enough so far. Problem is that this label uh, is not uh, horizontal anymore. It makes it harder to read and uh, I typically don't like to uh, see vertical labels like that, especially on schematics. So uh, one of the first things I wanted to do was rotate this label um, even though this part got rotated in a, in a separate operation. Uh, there's pretty much no way to select this label. Uh, the only selectable thing is this crosshair on the part. And so what Eagle gives you is, a again, a non-intuitive operation. It's called Smash. So if you click Smash and then click the part, uh, it will separate the two components. So it'll separate the label and the part itself. So no longer do you have only a crosshair for the part to select. You can see that there's a crosshair for the label now. And with that crosshair, you can move it independently of the part. You notice that there's a line that goes to the um, part from the label. I just call that a tether. I don't know what the right term, term is for it, but it's uh, still tethered to the part to indicate that that's associated with that part. Now you can either, uh, while you're moving it like this, use your uh, right mouse button to click and rotate. Each time you click, it rotates it. So I'm just clicking my right mouse button to get it to rotate around like that. Um, the other thing you can do is you can uh, click on the rotate here and then click the label and you get the same action. So uh, that is one way to do it. Now uh, some fine adjustments which are kind of nice are uh, if you want to move that and set this label right on top of the inductor you can um, select the move operation which I did here and then um, select the label. Now you notice that it just snaps to a grid. Whenever I move the cursor a little bit it moves and snaps to a particular spot. If I hold down the option key, this is on a Macintosh but an alt key on um, on PC Windows, if you hold that down while you're moving it it goes to a much finer grid or a much finer scale so you can finally adjust where that label goes. And So I'm just going to drop it right there. Now I've got a inductor with a label you know, directly over the top of it and it's um, horizontal and it's easy to read. So I hope that was enjoyable for you. Um, if you would like to see more tutorials on uh, Eagle on how to do some of these uh, simple sorts of things that trip you up right at the beginning, uh, come visit the sawdust.c-do.org website and uh, there should be some more tutorials for you there. Thanks a lot.